Hi, my name's Nikki Wyman. I'm a Christian singer-songwriter from Staffordshire in England, which is in the UK. I'm going to share a little bit with you today about how I first came to know the Lord, uh, how I got started in writing and singing and playing and sharing my testimony. Um, so my mum's family are Polish and um, they were raised as Catholics. So when they uh, came at the end of the Second World War and settled in the UK, uh, my mum had my brother and I and also brought us up as Catholics. So we went to Catholic schools. So in the Catholic schools, we heard a lot about the Bible. We heard a lot about the stories of Jesus and of God. We went to a lot of mass, um, sang a lot of um, sort of traditional hymn, hymns and things. The things that I really loved from, from uh, school, from the mass and from the teachings that we were having actually was, was the singing. The only thing that I really wanted to be involved in was, was being in the choir. So that's the thing that I really remember from my time, sort of from my Bible time and things from school, was the singing. Really wanted to be involved in that. But whilst we had a lot of really great information and things from the Bible, uh, the parables about Jesus and about God and all those kinds of things, I didn't have any relationship with God. So I had a lot of information, but I didn't actually have any belief or, or any connection with God at all. So this carried on sort of to high school when I went to the Catholic high school also. And, but at 14, we had the opportunity to go away on a three-day weekend Christian retreat. Um, now, my motives to go to this weekend were not very pure uh, because it was three days, it was dormitories of boys and girls, and I basically just wanted to go to be away from my parents um, and be off doing something else. Uh, so uh, my motives weren't pure, but... I had an experience during that, that three-day weekend that really started my relationship with God. So during those three days, the people that ran that religious retreat were what I would later understand would be uh, spirit-filled born-again believers. So they were people who had been born again into a relationship with God and they were sharing that with us. So. We would sing songs, we would play games, um, they would lead prayer times and, and worship times and they encouraged us actually to talk to God and to have a connection with him. Well, during those three days, I had uh, an experience of being aware that there was, there was someone um, tangible um, at, at all of the services and sort of, you know, permeating the whole time that we were there. Uh, and it was something that I'd never experienced before, was the, was the presence of someone there, actually who, who I could feel and who I felt loved me um, and knew me and was very comforting in a way that I'd never experienced before. So unfortunately, as these things always do, the three days came to an end and we, we went back to, to school and myself and some of my uh, female girlfriends at the time, we tried to carry on with this. So we would meet together and pray and things, but there wasn't anybody that around at the time who could help lead us in that. So unfortunately it petered out and we didn't carry on with it. And then by the time I was 15, uh, I got involved in chasing after boys and drinking and all that kind of stuff. So it sort of came to nothing. Um, I didn't really pursue it anymore, although I'd had these great three days, this, this great... Um, experience of the presence of God that I've not had before um, but that you know sort of was all over by the time I was 15 and so I carried on and then sort of fast forward to the time that I was 23 so this was sort of nine years later um, I was working um, I was living with a guy we'd bought a house um, so he'd got a steady job I'd got a steady job we bought a house we we both got um, we hadn't got any debt you know, and he was a decent guy, you know, there was there was nothing sort of wrong from, from that point of view. So everything really you would say from um, from a, a, the world's point of view was okay, it was great. Um, however, from my point of view, things were not great. And I couldn't really understand um, why I wasn't satisfied with life, why I wasn't I contented. You know, everybody else seemed to be you know, happy with with having a stable relationship and a steady job and, you know, having no debt and, you know, owning your home. These seem to be the things that, that 
you know, were normal and that people should be happy with. Uh, and so I couldn't understand why I was so disappointed with life. You know, I was only 23, nothing, you know, majorly bad had happened or whatever, and I wasn't missing anything that, you know, that you could, you could say was, uh, was important for life. But there was a big piece missing and I couldn't figure out what it was. I was very afraid to die also. You know, I couldn't understand how you could just blink out of existence. You know, you would suddenly stop feeling anything or being aware of anything. And one day you would just, you know, it would be like you, you, you had never lived. Um, that, that made me very, very disturbed. Um, and I couldn't understand it. I was very, very interested in the supernatural very interested in ghosts, reincarnation, you name it, I would read a book on it, and I had lots and lots of information again, but there were no answers in anything that I was reading, watching, listening to. You know, there was no contempt, there was no peace there, there was no, there was no real answer. So I was 23 years old, um, I was disappointed with life in general, thinking, you know, this can't be it, surely not. Surely, you know, there, there is more to life than, than just buying new stuff, going on holiday, you know, having children, working, retiring. That, that is, that is so disappointing, you know, surely there's something more, but I didn't have the answer. So that year, which was 1999, one of the very close female members of my family had a very dramatic experience, a very dramatic experience where she was delivered from um, some very troubling things happening happening in her life, but she was delivered by God. Now, this for the rest of us that that were trying to come up with ways to help her, um, and and we were very worried about her and didn't know how to help. God delivered her from all of these things. So that's that's another testimony, and it's much longer, so I won't share that. But this was the catalyst that, that God then used to get my attention again because this family member, um, she went on to receive Christ into her life. She received Jesus. And she connected with a local um, body of believers and started going to church. Well, for us who were closest to her in the family, we thought this was even worse. We thought, now she's joined a cult. This is even even worse than, than the problem that she had before. Where is this gonna end? Um, and she would share her faith with us and, and we would, uh, were very, very resistant. You know, there was no way that we were going to put up with this kind of thing. Um, however, she persuaded us to go to her baptism. So sort of in October, September, October time in 1999, she decided she was going to get baptized, which was about six months after she'd had this dramatic um, encounter with the Lord. So we agreed to go um, because, you know, we love her and you know we will come and support you kind of thing but don't expect anything else from us so we went along to the baptism and as soon as the the first song started which was a modern um worship song so not one of the traditional hymns that was had been used to singing at church <clears throat> and obviously i'd not been to church for a long long time since i left school i hadn't gone back to church at all um we started to sing this song and immediately became aware of that same sensation, that same um, sort of presence. And I had a flashback to the time of when I was 14 and, and I'd be first become aware of this presence. And it was all, you know, sort of perhaps in the first 20, 30 seconds of having, of beginning to sing this song. And I realized that this person that I'd encountered when I was 14, here he is again. And it was, it was like um, a dynamite, like a thunderclap, you know, it wasn't anything audible, but in my heart, it was this realization that here's this person again. Now I'd totally forgotten that I'd had in this, had this experience when I was 14 and I'd gone nine years not thinking about it at all. But now here I am again and I'm experiencing this person for the second time in my life. So we got to the end of the baptism service <clears throat> and me and uh, this lady who'd been baptized, we were outside having a, having a cigarette because we both smoked at that time, <clears throat> which now, praise God, na we, God has delivered us from that. Neither of us smoke now. But we were outside sharing a cigarette. 
and she said oh you know we have a, a family bible study on wednesday um if you're interested in coming so i said well okay I'll, I'll come and i'll sort of check it out because after having experienced during the baptism this person's presence again i realized do you know this is the second time that this has happened to me i cannot let it go i have to find out what this is and what this is about you know i don't want to go any longer without finding out more about this because this is the only thing that seems to have any reality to it you know i have to find out what this is so i went along on the wednesday night to the bible study and the pastors of the church that she was attending were there um, sort of leading the study and i fired a million and one questions at them i had lots and lots of questions about the bible obviously because i'd done a lot of it at school um but about life now in general having experienced life and 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 you know seen many many different things there were lots of things i didn't understand and i couldn't understand I, god always seemed so angry and you know sort of schizophrenic one minute he would be, you know, condemning everybody and the next minute he'd be loving everyone. And I didn't understand, you know, what was portrayed in the Bible. But they they are very wise people. Um, and they were able to show me from the Bible, to show me in the Word, from the Old Testament and the New Testament, they were able to answer all of my questions. And it all made complete sense to me. And so that night, I then got saved. Um, so I asked Jesus... Uh, to forgive me of my sins i sort of said you know lord i have done so many many things wrong your standard is so so much higher than the world's standard you know it isn't according to am i better you know I, i'm better than the person next door you know i haven't i'm better than all the people in jail you know i haven't robbed a bank i haven't killed anybody or whatever but actually that's not enough you know good deeds and being a good person according to to our standard is not enough when you compare it to God's standard and God's standard is so much higher you know his holiness and his perfection is what is required for anybody to see the kingdom of God and it's like Jesus said to Nicodemus in the Bible Nicodemus asked him the question and Jesus said to see the kingdom of God you've got to be born again and Nicodemus said well how's that going to work you know how am I going to get back in my mother's womb again that's never going to happen is it how what are you talking about and so Jesus said no I'm talking about you have to be born of water, i.e. you're born um, of the birthing waters of your mum when you're born, but also you have to be born of the spirit. And, you ha and that's the part of you that has to be born again. So that was the part of me when I accepted the Lord's sacrifice. You know, his sacrifice on the cross was to pay for the sins of all mankind. Um, and that's why he came to earth. That was his mission. So that was the sacrifice that he made for all of us and I accepted it. So that was in 1999, which was, uh, well, we're in uh, December 2019 now, so it was 20 years ago. And since then, you know, that, that sort of the following day, I can honestly say that I woke up a completely different person. I had desires to do things um, that now seem completely normal. But, but back then, you know, before me accepting the Lord in that Bible study, it would have felt completely wrong. You know, now suddenly I wanted to be married. I wanted to follow God. I wanted to find out more about him. You know, the desire to sing and play the piano was sort of like reignited in me. I'd always had that, but it, it had sort of not come to anything. So God, you know, put in my heart the desire um, to, to play and to sing um, and to share the love of God. Because, you know, God is, is reaching out to people, you know, through every member of, of his body, every member of the church, he wants to pull people out of the fire, you know, from the fire of, you know, sort of hopelessness, of, of not knowing what life is about really, you know, that's where I was, um, being dissatisfied with life, not really knowing what it's all about, and not really knowing what true love is, what true acceptance, um, and truly being valued, as much as, you know, uh, I have great parents, I have uh, a great family. The love that comes from God is only God can give it. And it is completely unconditional and not according to, you know, how nice we are, how we look, how we behave or whatever, um, because none of that matches up with, with what would be required normally. 
Um, so the love of God surpasses all of those things. And it's the love of God that, that really ignited in my heart and, and made me want to learn how to communicate that to people through music. So God has given me um, lots of songs. I've released three EPs. Um, I go out and share the love of God through music and through sharing my testimony sort of in the UK and the US and sort of overseas. Um, and he really has given me that destiny. You know, I'm not disappointed with life anymore because I know what it's about now. You know, my time here is, is really about sharing the goodness of God um, and advancing his kingdom in people's hearts so that people can can experience God for themselves. And that's really what he's given me a music ministry to do, is to share who Jesus is, to share that God is available for every person and that each one of us can experience that. And in part, people experience it through the songs and the things that I sing. So below, there should be a link to my Facebook page where you can connect with me there. Uh, you can hear some of the music on Spotify, you can get stuff on iTunes and um, on my Facebook page there's also a link to my website which is nickyw.com where you can uh, see some other videos and connect with my YouTube channel and all sorts of social media. Um, so please follow that link and have a look and listen to the music and be blessed. Amen. <laughs>